Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jo Brand. In the news this week, at the World Decathlon Championships, there's evidence that some competitors may have been using illegal dolphin steroids. <laughs> At a COVID test centre in London, an investigation is underway to establish how a batch of fresh test swabs were accidentally replaced with old rectal thermometers. <laughs> and despite even harsher government restrictions, here's a fine example of how, with cooperation and coordinated effort at a local level, we can get through this. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a journalist and broadcaster who's interviewed most British leaders, including Tony Blair, Gordon Brown and David Cameron, although she's yet to interview the current one, Carrie Simmons. Will you please welcome Charlene White? <laughs> And with Paul tonight is an American comedian who comes from Georgia, a state so slow at counting presidential election votes, they've only just declared for Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Please welcome Reginald D. Hunter. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Charlene, have a look at this. Ah, so Boris pulling a cracker. <laughs> Not for the first time. <laughs> he saved Christmas for us. Hello, there's recovery over there. He is also signing a deal with Father Christmas on how he can feed the kids over Christmas. <laughs> anyway, yes, so this is the big news. Christmas is saved. Boris is giving us Christmas very mm. generously. I'm all for cancelling it. How about you, Ian? Well, you're pretty miserable. <laughs> well, it'll be cheaper. Oh, yeah, so yeah. not living. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I'm sort of like a reverse Scrooge, cos I start off thinking, Christmas, great, and then by the end I think, oh, shit, isn't it, Christmas? <laughs> I'm disappointed in all of you. Yeah, OK. Um, we've been granted this, this festivity for a, a brief period of time, and I think we should be very, very well, grateful. Why have you dragged me and Reg into this? We haven't said a word <laughs> yet. <laughs> Come on. Are you looking forward to Christmas? Yes. Good, thank God, I've got an ally. Yes. Actually, now you agree with me, I'm, I'm thinking I must be wrong. <laughs> Is he one of the households you're going to have round to your house, Ian? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sets the dogs on me if I go anywhere near his house. I like how the British government think that the virus will take time off like we will, like, you know, for Christmas. Yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the virus wants to spend time with his family, too. <laughs> yeah, couldn't we have Christmas just delayed? Couldn't we have it at Easter? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it might confuse some of the religious messaging going on. <laughs> uh, I think Jesus was born and died on the same might, day. Might give the impression that Jesus was crucified at the age of three days old. But other than that... <laughs> yeah, or, or, and it's Thanksgiving uh, this week where you are, though, isn't it? Today, in fact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, and what are they giving thanks for today? <laughs> oh, oh um, uh, uh, about the time uh, British people came to America and um, uh, helped black people uh, meet Indian people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I remember that in my history lessons. <laughs> if it wasn't for British people, we never would have known no American Indian. Thank you. Thank you very much. How did the sign characterise the Prime Minister's generosity? Oh, they had a picture of Noddy Holder with Boris's face on it. And he was screaming, it's crisis. <laughs> OK, there we go. What will your daddy do when he sees your mama kissing Santa Claus? He'll shout, Boris, uh, take that beard off and get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> what was the essence of Boris Johnson's message? It was one of his typical mixed messages, wasn't it? You've got to have a lot of fun, but don't have any. Sensible mayhem. Well, he said, use personal judgment, don't throw caution to the wind, tis the season to be jolly, careful. Well, that's not been his motto in life, has it? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to get the credit for having saved Christmas, but he doesn't want us to have too much fun at Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> Try to enjoy yourself, but remember, you'll probably kill people. <laughs> <laughs> Just you seem to follow a few rules at Christmas. Yes. You're supposed to be safe, don't you? Yeah. The one I think people always forget is don't touch your face all the time. So I'm just going to have two mince pies, one in each hand at any time for the whole five day. And you've got to eat indoors, but with the windows open. I'm going to eat outdoors with the windows closed. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, how will the three-bubble system work at Christmas? According to the Telegraph, 
parents with several children will have to choose between them. Which bubble to join? Well, no, let's say you've got five children yeah. and, and they're all grown up and they've all got families. You can only have two oh. of those children. You know, if you don't get chosen by your parents, don't, don't worry, because it just means they, they love those siblings more than you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There'll be those kids with middle child syndrome. They were the ones... Exactly. Concerned. I'm middle child and I'm Thank fat, you. so there's no way I would get chosen. <laughs> <laughs> I would eat too much Christmas dinner and I'm the annoying one. Yeah, are you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Can't you tell? Well, I, without meeting the other two, I wouldn't really know. <laughs> <laughs> what did Boris Johnson do to himself in the House of Commons? I'm not sure we can say that on national TV. He muted himself. He did. Did he? Ian. Yeah. He was trying to reflect national opinion. Was he? So halfway through his speech, he just turned himself off. <laughs> As opposed to him turning other people on. <laughs> Would you like to see it? Yeah, why yes. not? Yes. Many of the points I hope that he agrees in that letter were answered in my uh, statement about, uh, about sport, the curfew, non-essential uh, retail, gyms, personal... <laughs> Have you pressed the button, Prime Minister? <laughs> Prime Minister. Right. I think we're just going to have to stop for a moment to we can have it checked. And the speaker's role written there by Alan Bennett. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> it's rather charming. So, has there been some good news this week? Can anyone think of any? Yeah. Go We've on, got then. another vaccine. Yep, another yeah. Vaccine. yeah! I said last week, no one knows how to deal with good news. So this vaccine comes in, the other two are 92%, this one's 70%, which is unbelievable. And they go, no, it's 70%. <laughs> oh, it's not going to work. Oh. No, but it can be 90% if you just give half the first yes. dose. So if you don't give that first dose, it'll be 100%. <laughs> Brilliant, we're on. Yeah, exactly. People are funny, aren't they? They just think this is going to go on forever and there's no way out of it. And then you say, we've got three vaccines, and they go, oh, mm. three, but oh, that'll be confusing. <laughs> I think it's just like people join the 100 Years War. They said, is this never going to end? <laughs> <laughs> and when we, next time we do this series in the spring, we'll have real people sitting in the audience instead of people sitting at home underneath the bedclothes getting up to all sorts of things and the KP looking up at the screen and <laughs> <laughs> a, a odd laugh here and there. <laughs> hey, <Bye. laughs> I didn't know there was so much gin and tonic in the country. <laughs> what do you like? I like vodka. I mean, this, is, this is now going to make the programme <laughs> stop. <laughs> the only time I ever drank vodka was when I was working at Tooting Employment Office and my parents went away and, I, I, <laughs> and I, 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 I drank about three or four bottles of vodka during the week. I went into work one day, I was so drunk that the peppermints I was having to try and get rid of the taste of vodka tasted of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I phoned up the rest of the uh, employees on the various phone links within the office and told them that the world was going to end at midday. <laughs> <laughs> that was my career in the civil service. They are recruiting civil servants again. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know if they've looked at my record. <laughs> it's been a good week yeah. for analogies. Yes. Would you like to see a compilation of analogies? Yes. So this is like, um, you know, getting to the end of a playoff final. It's gone to penalties. The first player goes up, scores the goal. It's the second penalty now. That's also gone into the back of the net. It's the third goal in the back of the net now <laughs> in my penalty shootout. I can tell you that tonight that toot of that bugle <laughs> is louder, <laughs> but it's still some way off. Why do you need an analogy when the simple thing is easy to understand that there's a vaccine on the way? <laughs> well, why does it need to be dressed up as football? The caterpillar is wearing a crash helmet. <laughs> <laughs> the butterfly will be riding the motorbike. I mean, you know, you don't need any of that. I like the idea that the last film he watched was a sort of film where the US cavalry turn up. I mean, I hope it wasn't Battle of the Little Bighorn, because <laughs> that one didn't go so well. No, no. Sorry, my American history, Reg. Yeah, I was going to talk to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just see, shall we, what the Telegraph has to say about the lifting of restrictions. Yes. Yeah. Well, they say restrictions will be lifted by Easter as long as everyone in the first ten population groups has been vaccinated. This will take a coordinated and meticulously planned campaign by the government. So that's not happening. <laughs> um, OK, we should see an next spending review. Uh, what was the disturbing thing about that? Does anyone know what I think work? we're more in debt than at any time since the Great Frost in 1709. I think that is a very good uh, point to make, but it was actually <coughs> that he was pictured working on his spending review wearing a hoodie. 
<gasps> I know. <laughs> no one's calling him Dishy Rishy anymore, are they? No. Are they not? No. He was in favour then. People thought it was quite cool then, but then he's now doing Fishy it. Rishy. Yeah. Why, why do you think he's not cool anymore? He's not giving uh, the, the pay rise to... Uh, to, to all rights. of them. He's to all them. of them, other than the NHS. He's not giving them uh, uh, the money that they feel they deserve. So he's now fallen out of favour. It's like being oh. the popular boy in school and then by the end of the school term, no one wants to talk to him anymore. What, because he's, he's given away all his pocket money? Yeah. And then he doesn't have any left? Yeah. I do love the, the, the fickleness. Rishi gives away a billion, zillion, million quid to everyone and everyone goes, not enough, it's too late. And then he says, there'll be a small tax rise. No, too soon, too soon, <laughs> too much. <laughs> so how has an old neighbour of Matt Hancock been benefiting from the pandemic? He's been given money for protective equipment and he hasn't produced any. His name is Alex Bourne. He is a former neighbour of Matt Hancock and he's been supplying the government with tens of millions of vials for NHS COVID-19 tests, despite having had no previous experience of producing medical supplies. Here's the two of them in Alex Bourne's pub. There we go. He runs a pub, does he? The Cock Inn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Yes, when Matt Hancock's there, people say, is the Cock Inn? <laughs> All right, here you are, Ian. This is right up your street. What's the massive piece of good news? Is that you can go and watch matches if you're in yes, the lower tiers. Indeed. Football fans are going to be let into matches again, provided the tier system allows. In London, up to 2,000 fans will be admitted. So, a return to normality for Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> what, so 2,000 people can go and watch football together, mm. but I can't have dinner with an old friend inside my house? No, or, no. or like, see your, your nan or what have you. But if you bring your nan to the football... Because, see, your family's more likely to spit in your mouth than football fans are. <laughs> and that's why it's dangerous. Yeah, especially when they see what you got them for Christmas. <laughs> 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 OK, finally on this one, how has the Belgian town of Oudenburg caused a bit of a Christmas kerfuffle? They've captured Father Christmas and beat him like a mad dog. <laughs> <laughs> the Mayor, Anthony Dummery, commissioned some Christmas lights to perk up the town and he yep. got these. <laughs> <laughs> the blue colour at the top's a bit of a worry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They should get those at the cock in. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that we can all spend Christmas with our loved ones. Bollocks. Uh, Boris Johnson was criticised for announcing the holiday rules in a flippant manner. Tis the season to be jolly careful. Although that's better than his original idea, ding dong merrily don't die. Uh, some people are unhappy about relaxing the rules. According to the Telegraph, one expert said a Merry Christmas could mean burying your relatives in January. Not Moonpig's most cheery card. <laughs> <laughs> the Cabinet Office Minister, Michael Gove, warned that the Christmas period will not be normal, which is sad because I love the normality of celebrating the imagined birth of a 2,000-year-old carpenter by falling into a pre-diabetic coma in front of live and let die. <laughs> <laughs> the new Christmas You're rule... You're so miserable, Joe. <laughs> I, I can't help it, Ian. Come on, I'm balancing out your massive... <laughs> weirdly placed enthusiasm <laughs> for COVID Christmas. Yeah. Uh, the new Christmas rules uh, come following guidance from the SAGE committee, but until we also hear from the Onion Committee, <laughs> I'm not going to have. Paul and Reg. Yes. Take a look at this. Uh, something tells me this is Utah. <laughs> Grand Canyon, maybe? What's that, Reg? What's that? Uh, that would be a monolith that was discovered recently in Utah. The uh, bikini has travelled <laughs> through the galaxy. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is a mysterious object which has appeared in Utah. Any idea what it is? On the safe side, <laughs> I'm just going to call it um, cosmic art. OK. <laughs> so, yeah, this is art from another planet. Um, it's been put there by aliens, it's been there for uh, a long, long time. Nobody knows how long it's been there, how it got there, what it's doing. Well, I think the two aliens landed and they said, can you take us to your leader? And everyone said, well, you'll have to wait for the end of the count. It's, it's too early. Is that called satire? <laughs> <laughs> That's a particularly poor taste. First of all, it's the news that a monolith... It's a monologue delivered by somebody with a lisp. What? A monolith is a monologue delivered by somebody with a lisp. 
Doesn't know, it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one knows where it's from, Ian. What's this, the monolith? Yeah. That sounds like a monologue delivered by somebody with a lisp. Well, well, if you look really closely, you can just make out to Ed Miliband's at six election. <laughs> 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 What's the name of the artist that they think might have done oh. it? Is it Maggie Hamling? No. Is it a statue oh. of you, Joe? <laughs> Do you know what? I wish it was a statue of me, because I think it looks much more attractive than me. Oh, oh. No, so Ian, I'm not cute. saying that in a self-deprecating way, but I think it's rather beautiful, that Yeah, No, I agree. Yeah. It's as sexy as you, Joe. Don't you worry about it. Oh! <laughs> You're as sexy as a piece of upright metal in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are we now? More la, la, Are you la, blushing, la. Joe? What? Are you blushing? No, I'm not. <laughs> I've got high blood pressure. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm blushing. <laughs> How did it get there? Anyone got any ideas? It could be an alien cash point. Who knows, man? <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, just, you know, like, because they wouldn't want, if you was an alien coming to Earth, yeah. you wouldn't want your cash point to be, like, on the high street in Soho. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the human beings, you know, just buzzing with all kinds of viruses right now, man. It's yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, yeah. They probably already have cash points um, all over, but they just want some distance from us and everything. Yeah, exactly. I, now, I think this, but I don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, no one really knows. Our news readers a bit mm. short on facts, as we can see here. Let's have a look. The structure not only appears to be solid and heavy, but is more than two times the height of this man. <laughs> <laughs> this just in. <laughs> uh, Utah is launching an official investigation to try and explain how it got there. However, Lieutenant Nick Street, who works in the department, claimed. It's somebody's art installation, or an attempt at that. <laughs> oh, Nick, that's quite bitchy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, the monolith was found after some men were on patrol. What were they initially looking for? Counting sheep. They were. They were, they were in a helicopter, not the sheep, the men. <laughs> and uh, they were looking down, counting the sheep, and somebody said sort of metal thing glinted, and they went down and they discovered it. Indeed. They were doing a head count for big horned sheep in mm. the area. How did one local news channel ensure that its location would remain secret? Well, they gave the coordinates. <laughs> you might be closer than you think, Mary. Its location is not being revealed in case any sci-fi nerds try and find it and uh, get stuck. So here it is. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that seemed to be quite a remote uh, area, doesn't it? I think there's a road not that far away. Ah, oh, that's but... yes, yes. I like the idea of these shepherds in their helicopters. That would make Christmas more interesting. <laughs> Let's works. go and adore him. <laughs> <laughs> As shepherds flew their choppers by night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write the nativity play. It's yeah. going to be great, Joe. You're going to enjoy it. It'll make your Christmas. All right, Ian. I accept that. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of strange structures. Stuck out in the wilderness. What's Donald Trump almost done this week? Um, conceded that he lost. Absolutely. I was guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Trump said that he told officials to begin initial protocols for a transfer of power for the best interests of the country. That's nice of him, isn't it? I think right yeah. after that, he then repeated that, that he'd actually won the election. That's right. He said, we will never concede to fake ballots and dominion. Who's dominion? Um, there was these uh, warlike people in um, uh, uh, Deep Space Nine. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Who was Trump granting a pardon to this week? Oh, Michael Flynn? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, not Michael Flynn, actually. Well, yes. Oh, the turkey. But, yes, turkey. that's right. A turkey oh. called Corn beat Cobb in a Thanksgiving Twitter poll and was yes. pardoned. But here they are. Yeah. This is one of the bizarre things they do. Other countries have these customs, which they get used to, uh, you know, because they've been doing them for years. But then when you look at it from the outside, it just seems completely balmy. <laughs> and also just to have a choice of two. And then asking the people, do you want to kill this one? Do you want to kill this one? And imagine how you feel if you're a person sitting on death row. Looking at this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the pardoning, shall we? Corn, I hereby grant you a full pardon. Thank you, Corn. Well, and I'm not big on conspiracy theories, but I think Ivanka's in that turkey. And then Trump can legitimately claim that she's been pardoned. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. 
Uh, what surprise did Joe Biden spring on us this week? His cabinet? Yeah, well, yes. Oh. Yes. Effectively. Although he's had to defend his picks after he was criticised for appointing all the old Obama lot. Uh, he's basically got the old band back together. And, well, Ian, Shawadi Wadi's 2003 reunion wasn't quite as good the second time round, was it? No. I think it really wasn't. <laughs> oh, it could be a really good uh, reforming like Take That. That was a good one. It was a good one. I saw Mud twice. Oh, I used to love Mud. Yeah, we were all just waiting for them to do Tiger Feet. You went to see them twice? Yeah, not... No, I didn't know they were playing. Ah. Oh, by mistake. <laughs> Were you expecting the Royal Philharmonic? I was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, it's mud. <laughs> Appalling. Good grief, I don't recognise this. <laughs> Did you actually say good grief? <laughs> <laughs> Will they not be quite so great the second time round, the, the Biden gang? Well, I'm not sure well, they're going to be as so... bad as what they've had for the last four years. Exactly. Fair. You know, they just need to not be as bad as that and they'll be winning. It's a very low bar. Well, it said. is a low bar. Uh, I don't think it's even it's too, well, it's too, too low to be a bar. It's, it's submerged. <laughs> <laughs> well, a Republican senator called Tom Cotton accused Biden of surrounding himself with panda huggers who would go soft on China. Well, that sounded kind of loaded. He's <laughs> <laughs> facing a hard task to try and arouse a panda. Not even another panda can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't bother myself. All right. Ten years, load of bamboo, nothing. <laughs> you speak from personal experience, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Just after the mud concert. <laughs> there is no way Joe Biden is going to go the distance over four years. Uh, no. <laughs> the so, way he shuffles across the stage, it's like I'm not sure he'll be here by the time he's officially president at the end of January. I know. I'm, I mean, well, I'm this not... is a bit harsh on Joe Biden. He's just he's, he's just won this huge landslide, and we, we're not even you're not going to give him till January to, to, to live the rest of his days. <laughs> Paul, I'm not even sure he knows he won. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, this is the news that a mysterious monolith has been found in Utah. One theory popular on Twitter is that the monolith was left by passing aliens <clears throat> as a message to humanity. That message being, stop looking at Twitter. Um, <laughs> also, this week, Donald Trump finally prepared to leave office by pardoning convicted criminal Michael Flynn. Uh, following Trump's controversial pardon, the newspapers are bringing up the case of Michael Flynn again. I think he's grown whiskers on his chin again. <laughs> um, so, at the end of that round, it's two points each. <laughs> Uh, and so, to round two, the Teddy Picker of News. Let's see, fingers on buzzers, team. Yeah. Here's the first one. <laughs> oh, you guys have gone all out for this. <laughs> Until now, I didn't realise we didn't have a graphics department. <laughs> 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 Was that all you wanted to that's say? That's all I wanted to say. I've got no okay. idea what that's about. <laughs> Go on, then. Uh, Boris Johnson saying to the police officer, you better smile or I'll set her on you. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget Patel has been cleared by the Prime Minister. There was an inquiry into whether she was a bully or not, and a civil servant finished his report and said, yes, she probably was. She broke ministerial reports, but it might have been unintentional. And Boris said, um, no, I don't think she's a bully. That's it. And so the person who compiled the report had to resign, um, and so everyone's in the clear, except the people who aren't. Alex Allen. Alex Allen. Yeah, the Prime Minister's advisor on ministerial standards. He resigned from his post. We can only hope that Alex left Westminster as dramatically as he once arrived there during a train strike in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now he's gone, Alex Allen. Uh, former MI5 Chief Jonathan Evans was critical of the Prime Minister having sole discretion over the report, saying that it risked looking like marking your own homework. Still, safer than letting Gavin Williamson do it. <laughs> uh, while certain that Pretty Patel was guilty of bullying behaviour, Sir Alex Allen's report added that there was no evidence she was aware of the impact of her behaviour. Doesn't sound like any bully I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any examples of what she said? It was sort of shouting, Shout screaming telling people they were useless at their job. Right. And swearing. 
that thing that never happens in any workplace ever no. anywhere across the country. Well, it, apparently Sir Alex Allen had previously warned Priti Patel about her behaviour, saying, I advised her on a number of occasions between September 2019 and February 2020 about the need to treat staff with respect. But when he told her this, she looked at him and thought, I will see you off, though. <laughs> <laughs> And so next year, I'm pretty sure that everybody else that talked bad about her in that report, she planned to see them off too. <laughs> <laughs> they can't cope with a woman in charge. In fact, I saw someone say that she couldn't possibly have done it because she's small. Hitler, Napoleon, <laughs> Stalin. <laughs> Not suggesting that she's like those, but they were all Scarface. small men. <laughs> small of stature. The crankies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look at the way they took over Eastern Europe in the 60s. <laughs> and Scotland now. Yeah. Well, what did Boris send to MPs over WhatsApp this week? He sent a message saying... Yeah. It's almost unbelievable he sent this. We've got to form a square around the Pritster. He did. Which I misread as Pritstick. <laughs> it just doesn't look like the type that you could hang up. A comfortable nickname on, like, the Pritster. You yeah, know? you can't you imagine know? being in the Home Office and going, Oi, Pritster! Yeah. I just don't think that'll go down very well. <laughs> it's more something like the Pritinator. Uh, um... <laughs> yes. uh, now, it was also the fault of the civil servants who apparently did not give Patel the support she needed in the department. So do they share some of the blame? Well, if somebody's shouting at you that you're useless, is it your fault? Well, I suppose if you're useless, maybe it is, mm. but uh, they, they're career civil servants. They, they probably know what they're doing after all these years. I mean, they may have drunk vodka all day. <laughs> I think you're referring to something that never made the edit, Ian. <laughs> 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 I'm desperately <laughs> trying to keep it in. <laughs> We've done some digging and uh, we've found some video evidence of the fear Pretty Patel instilled in staff. Uh, keep an eye on the door at the back. Um, we've got the Navy living next door to us, of course, which is always interesting when they bring the, uh, the big ships in. <laughs> nice freeze frame. Glad to see the freeze frame department hasn't been made redundant. <laughs> <laughs> to make way for the new graphics department. <laughs> <laughs> right, so fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the next one. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. Yes. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> the cricket tea. It's going to be scrapped. The cricket tea. Cricket tea. Um, it's in the in the middle of the game. You have tea. It's a measure of the sport's athleticism. <laughs> but about halfway through, you stop, you eat cake, preferably sandwiches, which are, are very, very important. So let me understand. Um, you're going to have to eat before or after the game rather than during the game. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's a, it is an appalling limitation on personal freedom. <laughs> <laughs> the reason for giving up the tradition is the expectation of a decent feed means the average cost of putting on a cricket spread can be 10 to 15 pounds a player. Oh, God, there's not that much money in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, why is uh, Sussex League Club Horsed Keynes Horseman T20 team devastated by the rule change? They specialise in making tea rather than playing cricket? Well, a spokesperson for the club told The Times, we're very disappointed, we've been working on a new Pavlova record. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, it's not just the players. Who else will this impact? The spectators, obviously. Yeah, umpires and scorekeepers, who often work for free but are compensated by a decent spread. <laughs> <laughs> one unnamed source said, What a joyless way to spend a Saturday. Teas were one of my delights in life. Why do they feel they had to be anonymous to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that's hardly going to incur the wrath of the Taliban, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sports broadcaster Mark Pugach said, if you're going to scrap tea and cricket, then you might as well scrap <laughs> <laughs> Big words from Mark there. That's yep. quite That's extreme, big. though, isn't it? He's got a point, though. I mean, if there's one thing about cricket, there's a lot of moving around. There's a lot, clearly a lot of running. So they clearly work up quite a bit of an appetite. Yeah. But it's, it's not as if they stand around for hours doing not very much. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you can play, like, hours and days and, and, and still have a draw, right? Yeah. It's like having sex all day and nobody comes. <laughs> no one's ever said that about cricket. <laughs> Who else is a big fan of the cricket tea? Ian Botham. No, it's former England captain Mike Gatting. His love of a good cricket spread was so notorious that once, after being bowled out by Shane Warne, one Australian player mused, 
the ball would never got past him if it had been a cheesy pickle <laughs> roll. <laughs> I like the sound of Mike gassing. Yeah. Finally, would you like to see a dog watching a darts match? Um, Every day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and Scott's his mind probably on that missed opportunity to take the leg and the set, which would have made it 3 3. That went. It's like the dog. It's like the dog that stays in the room is looking at the owner saying, you see how stupid he is? I told you he was fucking stupid. <laughs> look at him, look at him. See him? OK, all right. But you love him too, don't you? <laughs> this is the outrage over the decision to axe cricket tees in the Sussex League. According to the Mail, providing tea has also been uh, criticised as sexist, as the wives and girlfriends are asked to make the sandwiches. You can ask, mate, but I'd make sure you're wearing your box at the time. <laughs> also this week, football legend Maradona died. It's not yet known whether Maradona will be cremated, but if he is, his ashes are expected to have a street value of 8.7 million. <laughs> <laughs> time now for the odd one out round. Uh, just one between you this week. Your four are the British Army, Elon Musk, Goldfinger and Donald Trump. I think this is about going into space, having rockets. Is that right? Very, very, very vaguely, to obviously, to do, uh, to do technology. Is there anything to do with gold? With Goldfinger, obviously, and uh, Trump's love of gold? Well, I'll give you a clue. They've all promoted something. Some super weapon. Lasers. Indeed. Ah. They've all promoted the use of lasers, except for... Except for Goldfinger. No, he had a laser oh, yeah. that he tortured Bond with. Yes, but he wasn't promoting it. <laughs> he didn't say, this is the finest laser money can buy. Yeah, I, but I'd it was say... subliminal advertising. <laughs> yeah. uh, Trump, he's not, he's not promoting lasers. They all promoted the use of lasers, except for Donald Trump, who's scared of them. <laughs> so this week, events expert Joe Goldblatt revealed he worked for Trump in the 90s. Goldblatt told The Independent that whilst at the grand opening of Trump's Taj Mahal Casino in Atlantic City, there was a mishap with the laser beams which dropped by a metre, <laughs> appearing to project through <laughs> Trump's midsection. Trump immediately dropped to his knees, seemingly in fear of being severed in two. <laughs> Sadly, Trump already had his four children by then, so the laser to the groin came too late to stop the count. <laughs> um, what did Joe Goldblatt also reveal Trump used as his walk-on music at the event? Eye of the Tiger. It was, Ian. Oh. Yes, well done. Which, coincidentally, is one of the many experimental medicines he took when he had COVID. <laughs> um, here's a picture of Trump at the event. Oh, that's Aladdin's lamp. Yes, indeed. I think the 2016 election result was his third and final wish. <laughs> uh, what's the British Army planning to do with lasers? Is, that, is it part of the Defence Review? Reduce wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> well, announcing his 16.5 billion military spending spree last week, Boris Johnson said the armed services would be replacing traditional guns with laser weapons. <laughs> Someone's been watching way too much James Bond. It sounds like it, as it would help solve the problem of troops running out of ammo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is Elon Musk planning to stick lasers? Into outer space? Yeah, and use them to beam super fast internet around the world. Mm. Uh, what else has Elon Musk recently secured a patent for? Time machine. No, no. sadly not. He has said he will replace windscreen wipers on Tesla cars with lasers. A Tesla spokesperson insisted that the lasers would be set up in such a way that it does not damage the eyes of the vehicle's <laughs> occupants. In the 1964 film, Goldfinger captures James Bond, and as the Telegraph summarises it, an industrial laser carves a path towards 007's crown jewels, which would explain how he was able to do all that shagging but never have kids. <laughs> how did the studio create the laser effect in Goldfinger? Well, they decided a real laser was too dangerous, so instead they used a technician hiding under the table with a blowtorch and cutting through the table from underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Much safer. Brilliant. Um, OK, so they've all promoted the use of lasers, except for Donald Trump, who's scared of them. In the future, the British Army will be equipped with lasers for use in combat, uh, meaning the crack squad will be made up of Big Dean Stagdu, 
and a Foxton's team building away day. <laughs> Lasers can be incredibly useful. For instance, without them, I'd still be stuck with my Prince Andrew tattoo. <laughs> The only reason to be scared of lasers is if you don't understand how they work. The science is actually quite straightforward. You press the button and they go, oh, that I've got to make... How does... What's, what, how would you say that? Um, <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's as simple like as that. that. They go... <laughs> 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 Thank In Star you, Wars. Ian. And they go... Ping. Oh, yeah, we're mixing them up with microwaves. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just do that noise again? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which means at the end of this round, it's Ian and Charlene have six and Paul and Reg have three. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, time. I can a recap. <laughs> <laughs> really? Well, we'll sit here for a few weeks and then see how we all feel. Um, now, time for the missing words round, uh, which this week features as its guest publication, Billiards Buzz, the magazine for professional pool players. It's in every top player's home, either on the table or very close to the cushions. <laughs> and we start with... Woman shares controversial guide on how to cook Christmas dinner in what? Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Come on, Hempstead. Uh, a bomb shelter. The new. Uh, July. In, in a mine. In uh, a raging fury. In a, uh, in a coffee jug. In a washing machine. Getting nearer. Oh, dishwasher. Dishwasher, dishwasher. yes. This week, Shannon Doherty from America went viral after making this disturbing video. Did you know you could cook your veggies in the dishwasher? This is the best holiday dinner hack. Put veggies in mason jars, add water, and run them in a normal dishwasher cycle. Instant veggies, best cooking hack. <laughs> Yeah, watch out, Nigella. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, Nigella, here comes Salmonella. <laughs> Next, religious pool player calls his trick shot the gospel as it always ends with what? A miracle. Divine intervention. Revelation. With him saying, God damn. <laughs> it always ends with him handing out free pamphlets about Jesus. <laughs> well, that's got nothing to do with the trick shot. No, but it's sort of vaguely got a religious flavour. You call the trick the donut because he then eats a donut after he's done the trick shot. What's religious about a donut? It's holy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, take it back. This is an article from a Billiards Buzz about one competitor who refers to himself as the religious pool player, partly because he likes to convert people, but mainly because whenever he walks into the bar, people moan, "Oh Jesus, not him again." <laughs> <laughs> Next. Angry man in Lancashire sends local council photo of his son, what? Uh, it was, there was a massive pothole and the dad kept complaining to the council. The council kept ignoring him, so he put his son in the pothole <laughs> and took a picture to prove his point. Absolutely uh, correct. Brilliant. So this week, Aaron Cross was so annoyed about a large pothole in the road, he made his six-foot-tall son, Lewis, stand in it as proof. There he is. Shiny. <laughs> and we presumably he hasn't dismembered his son just to put him in a sort of three inch puddle. <laughs> Do you know who got in the hole after Aaron's son? Was it Pretty Patel? <laughs> then, you couldn't see her. Uh, let's have a look. But perhaps the most striking example of this road's erosion is right here, a six foot hole within which is Aaron. This can't be right, can it? <laughs> um, next. London takeaway in embarrassing gaff after advert what? Miss Prince Ducker today. Uh, London takeaway in embarrassing gaff after advert turns restaurant into rude word. This week, London eatery Anu's Kitchen uh, were left red-faced after an advert for the restaurant forgot the all-important <laughs> apostrophe. Have a look at this unbelievable picture. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, Jester the Rabbit knew he was special when he what? When he pulled a magician out of a top hat. <laughs> <laughs> when he read about himself in Billiard News. <laughs> when he was pardoned by Donald Trump. <laughs> he knew he was special when he featured on the cover of Continental Giant Rabbit magazine. That was so on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at him. <laughs> it is a giant rabbit. 
massive. No, that's not a rabbit. That's a horse. I haven't ruled out that that's a very small woman. <laughs> Imagine a fox that tried to come up on that cat right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He'd make a lot of pies, wouldn't he? If he was taught specially how to make them, yes. <laughs> Apparently, the vet recently had to put Jester the Giant Rabbit down as he's too heavy to carry. <laughs> um, so, the final scores are... Paul and Reg have six, but Ian and Charlene have eight. But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Government reveal method for choosing which tier each county is in. <laughs> Trump lawyer struggles to explain strategy to overthrow election results. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Charlene White, Paul Merton and Reginald D. Hunter. And I leave you with the news that following a particularly uh, fractious Cabinet meeting, Liz Truss suddenly realises that one of her colleagues has replaced her chapstick with superglue. <laughs> <laughs> that is the Brit stick. <laughs> <laughs> In Wiltshire, as one man's Uber pulls up, he's in two minds about asking the driver if he could put his mask on. <laughs> <laughs> and in Portsmouth, as a salon prepares to reopen, it occurs that no one checked on Donna in the tanning machine before they closed three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Good night!